I twitch. Yeah, I'm sure. Thanks. Kita is over scratching again. Oh no. <laughs> So she's on my, my table next to me, and she just, she starts to scratch, and she starts to, and I'm like, no, 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 I got it, I got it. <laughs> I don't have claws. I will, I will gently rub the area that needs, I'll, I'll do the little pat. It'll be okay. <laughs> the wig pat. The, do the wig Unlock pat for the kitty. Escape emotes. What is this? I don't know. Through the end of August, subscribe uh, or gift a sub to permanently unlock exclusive emotes to celebrate the hyperscape. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Twitter. This lies down. Whoops. So heavy. I'm, well, I don't know why I'm always amazed that these blankets are so heavy. <laughs> I can't weigh it because our scale is broken, but it has to be at least eight pounds of fabric. <clears throat> By fabric, I mean yarn. Mm. Okay, shared on the Facebook and the Twitter. Hi, Revis Dragon Lord, how are you? Hello. <laughs> we're we're doing okay. <laughs> Where's my? Looking for a plug. Let's give my phone some charging while he has a show. I had to unplug the cord because I had plugged into my. The Yeti plugged into the Mac for therapy and I went back to the PC for the show. <coughs> My kid is back to school. Fingers <laughs> crossed. What yeah. kind of projects, Revis? We have so many projects going on right now. Ugh. All right. Triggers my uh, <laughs> iTunes to open. No, I don't actually need you. Just charge. What? Just shut I up and charge. I don't know why. <laughs> like you, you did your like inhaler, and then you said that, and I'm like, you do you need your, your inhaler triggers your iTunes? <laughs> <laughs> no, plugging the phone <laughs> in did. Anyway, like, can I say how much I love that my therapist was like, oh, you got like a David Bowie Labyrinth shirt on. <laughs> like yes. <laughs> um. Ah. Oh no. Oh no. Morpheus, go away. Oh cat. <laughs> oh, that's the cat for the camera. I can tell. Hey, did you see the um, drawing of death, like needing vacation, wear the damn mask that I posted? Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. Oh. So good. So good. I don't know who draw drew it. Rob sent that to me, but it really looks like mm -hmm. on point. Yeah, I saw it floating around Facebook. Are you are you mad because I'm not on the couch with you anymore? <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Making buttons. How do you make buttons? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's 8.01, start whenever you want. Do you want me to, I can play the theme song and then give you a 3, 2, 1? Sure. Okay. That works okay. for me. We got perspective, we got the cool. 
We got the muscle and you know we have the rule. We are the geek grills. We are the geek grills. All right. We got the know-how. We got control. We got the knowledge and we tell you how it rolls. We are the geek grills. We are the geek grills. All right. We are the geek grills. We are the geek grills tonight. Okay, and go. Oh, and welcome to episode 167 of Geek Girls. The Geek Girls podcast is supported primarily by our patrons. You can find us at patreon.com slash grills. I am Linda, and I am joined by my co-host, September, also known as Nine of Twelve. Allo, allo. And Ray. <laughs> um, I didn't hear you. Did you, did you say a thing? Oh no! Oh no! Not we again! There, there, we, there you are. Say hello. What Say is hi. happening? <laughs> I'm gonna blame Morpheus. I'm just gonna blame my cat. Okay. He, he was like in front of the camera, so maybe he stepped uh, on your keyboard. I um, <laughs> I tried to move it. So uh, today's topic is Transformers: War for Cybertron: Siege, which is the new Netflix. Uh, Transformers miniseries, I guess you would call it. It's only six episodes, but it's part of a trilogy. Who knows when the next parts are coming out? But I, if I believe fans of the show who have listened for a while, know that I am a Transformers fan. Uh, so I will be taking yeah, point a on this. <laughs> I can't help it. Look, I have my prowl. And. I can't reach my jazz. He's up too high. <laughs> <laughs> eh, it's okay. Okay. Back up and go. <laughs> we believe you. We know. Up on your Okay. Um So <laughs> what have y'all been up to? <laughs> well, um, so I might be having a reaction to a new medication, or I might be allergic to tomato vines. Has been the other what the hell happened to me? Um, it's healing up now, but I end up calling my doctor on Friday because my face was doing, was coming off. It was doing weird stuff. I was like, it's not poison ivy. It doesn't itch. It doesn't burn. It doesn't hurt. I just had this like welting and then flaking around my eyes and on my nose. And I was like, oh no, it's lupus. I mean, I know it's never lupus, but. <laughs> Um, being I already have autoimmune issues and it was like across getting starting to spread across my cheeks and it looked like eczema. Um, I was like, no. Um, and my doctor of course wasn't in the office. So I was like, all right, well, it could be the new medication, blah, 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 blah. And so I just kind of treated the best I could and I was waiting for my doctor to call me back today and they never, I think they did, but it didn't come through my phone. But I've got it mostly healed up now, and I remembered when out with a friend on Saturday that it had started actually right after I had cut back a bunch of my tomato vines, and Rob and I were looking it up, and you can be perfectly fine with tomatoes and everything, but like have an allergic reaction to the vines that acts like that. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Weird. And they are kind of prickly, you know, and I did have a few yeah. little, like, hives on my hand. So, I'm guessing that was it. Um, I'm gonna test it. <laughs> that's the hor- like, that's the horrible thing you- when, when you're like, alright, that- that sucked. I guess I have to test it out to figure out what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and then but I have to get it again. <laughs> but at least I can control the area. Yeah. You know, and then slap some cortisone on it instead of ending up with my face peeling off. <laughs> yeah, that that almost sounds like like sunburn slash chemical burn so yeah but it was like spotty Ugh. like i was like what the hell i don't know anyway. do, do tomatoes spit acid to protect themselves <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it's basically a form of contact dermatitis mm. so i hope that was it and it's either that or because the new drug was a statin I didn't want to just go off it, even though the nurse said, oh, 
Well, it should be fine for just a few days to just go off that one in case that's it, and then she'll call you on Monday. But then they called me back, and just at quarter, at like 15 minutes past the time they closed, they called me back, left a message saying, hey, give us a call. I called, and I just got their voicemail because they had shut off the phone system. Right. I didn't have, but they called me after they were closed. There was no way for me to get through, and I was like, well, I better just keep taking the med because... It may very well be that one of the nurses thought of the thing I thought of is you don't just stop taking a statin. Um, yeah. yeah. So, and if it turns out it was that, I mean, and it's not doing that to my skin anymore, it, it just took getting used to. So anyway, yeah, that's <laughs> the annoying thing this week. Not very nerdy or anything, except that, you know, we look everything up like nerds. Um, <laughs> I started watching Below Decks. I was super interested in it. Um, all of you who hang out on Twitch have been, we had the ads pushed at us for a while and I had been seeing good things from my friends and it looks like right at my alley. And I was going to wait because um, we didn't want to get CBS All Access until Picard starts again. But it is, you can watch the first episode right now for free on Pluto TV, which is a free app. And it's on channel 110. Um, and my, I have a good friend who's kept telling me because their schedule only posts like a few hours ahead of time. And he for days would just message me when the next couple times it was going to be on until I could finally sit down and fucking watch it. Um, <laughs> I, re I do recommend Pluto TV. I will say for... Well, I have a bad thing to say and a good thing to say. It's it's pretty good. It has a ton of really cool programming. Like, there's a zillion channels, lots of things like old school Doctor Who and just many, many channels. I mean, everything from that to the Today Show um, as far as live TV and stuff. But um, we finally got it loaded up and we're sitting down and we're ready to go. And it glitched out. And because... You can't rewind or anything like that with it. It was, you know, by the time I, if I could get it reloaded and get the app to work, it was going to play again in a few hours or maybe tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, my God. So Rob said, hey, you know, CBS has been nagging me. And because we had it before, we they had offered us a free month of CBS All Access. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> he grabbed his email and we was like, hell with it, we'll just sign up <laughs> and start up the CMS All Access. And so we watched the first episode last night. There is a second episode out already we're going to watch tonight. And those are apparently coming out weekly. Um, I don't know for how long, but I really did love it. It was, it was hilarious. It gave enough fan service to people who are Trekkies. I feel in like the format, like it was like a, an animated edgy version, but <laughs> self, very self-aware of like, this is how, this is what happens every episode. Like you get in this kind of shit and then some sc random scrappy thing solves the problem. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was loads of fun. Also, we never watched Korra, the legend of Korra all the way through. Oh, okay. And we had watched Avatar uh, not long ago all the way through again. And now Korra is available on Netflix. And so we started watching that from the beginning oh, as God. kind of our I, next binge. I just remember the, the first season of Korra because they didn't know if they were getting a second season. I was like, I have emotional whiplash. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we kind of like, stopped it and go back and so we're starting from the beginning we're like after having just watched avatar freshly all the way through it was really cool to be like all right now we're gonna do this um i'm i'm liking it more than i remembered there's a lot of aesthetic things i really really like like the steampunky and then how the music cleverly fits in that you know 20 style uh music oh yeah yeah, um, and and the animation jump, you know, just because of the way that evolved all the way through Avatar, and I'm going to shut my mail off so it stops pinging at us. 
what else? Do, uh, should we do a heads up for people for our next book club? That's going to be in a while. Well, right? it's October. That's right, in October, but, but it we're doing the secret history, history of Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, yes. Mm -hmm. So Which I'm, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I thought we should. Gotta get it. <laughs> <laughs> mention that to anyone out there who wants to join in and read that book. Give you plenty of time. Uh, Heresy and Hearsay is back up and running. We did an episode last week and about liars and then <laughs> tomorrow um the other thing i'm looking forward to is uh, well that's that'll come later uh tomorrow we're going to talk about john lewis i believe uh rob is making me spice racks hey yeah Hi. he has a new friend and <laughs> she is apparently a little ocd about her kitchen organization and they got talking about it and he's like Man, because I don't, we have very little storage space in my kitchen, and I use a zillion different spices, and I need more cupboard space, but there's, like, just entire shelves full of different spices and spice blends and herbs, and so he went and got some poplar, and he's built these kind of modular shelves so we could add more later that are going to fit on the wall in the kitchen, so I'm going to be able to, like, clear out all, at least one or two shelves, at least one shelf at this point, of bottles of spices <laughs> to have for covered space. And um, I'm going to wood burn um, stuff on them, leaves and herbs, and then we're going to stain it with that acrylic method I had talked about before that we developed. So you know, like I'll be doing the finishing, making it all fancy, although I think we're going to wood burn together. We'll see how that goes so uh i briefly yeah. logged into wow i was having trouble sleeping last night and my son had took some of his birthday money and subscribed because he likes to play classic now and again and that kind of gave me access you know because he uses my account and yeah i logged in for minutes like because <laughs> the whole thing is facing that my guild fell apart like the guild message of the day is if anybody wants to revive this guild let me know and i'm like yeah <laughs> and she wasn't even on um so i just kind of just bailed back out i might play a little if i find some time but i i'd have to update my add-ons too and everything <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't miss all the the add-on maintenance. Having to do that after every patch. Yeah, yeah, that's no <laughs> fun. That and I couldn't get it to work. Like the add-on manager I used to use, I can't even remember what it's called, but they switched something, so I had to just individually do. Oh yeah. Them. Go through and disable each <laughs> one. Ugh, yuck. No. Yeah. So what are you even up to? Uh, so I recently, uh, over the weekend, completed all the quests in Stardew Valley. All so the Chivas? Uh, I don't get an achievement for it, but now I feel empty. It's, it's like <laughs> no. you complete all your quests in, like, in WoW. And it's like, well, there's nothing else to do in this in this section. I better move on to the next area. I'm like, but there's no other area. <laughs> So I'm like, uh, I guess I can start doing, like, finding things to do. Like, there's a whole casino section I haven't touched because I wanted to make sure I had enough money to get the most, ex the, the $2 million rod so I can instantly transport home and not have to worry about paying a, you passed out, so we're charging you a thousand gold and randomly some of your items will disappear. So I don't have to worry about that anymore now that I have a stupid amount of money. <laughs> So I don't know what to do anymore. Like, I guess I could finish up the Chivos, but the main drive is kind of gone now. Uh, let's see. The other thing we did is uh, we watched, uh, I, I watched Space Force on Netflix because I'm like, oh, hey, this cast looks incredible. It's And there's John Malkovich. And I oh, love John yeah. <laughs> I love Space <laughs> Force. <laughs> I'm like, that's okay. I, I kind of had higher hopes for it. It gets better as it goes, but it's still I think kind my of expectations a... were low. 
<laughs> so I just got like a huge charge out of the the snarkiness. Like oh, that's yeah. my he... style of humor very much and oh, yeah. the John political Malkovich jabs. Is the best thing. <laughs> like him and I really like the relationship between Chang and uh Aaliyah? Yeah. Yeah. Like I want more of that and I'm just I hope it gets picked up for another one, but it's I don't know, trying to compare it to something like uh, all about Ted or Parks and Rec or uh, especially The Good Place is it's definitely below for me so but it's not bad like definitely have it on in the background or give it a shot but you it's don't a style that really appears to me the, the comedic writing like I feel like Colbert could have wrote that <laughs> <laughs> but I it like... might be sometimes it's that good it keeps just... showing up there <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not bad um, I got a few more sketches done, and I started a painting. Let's see if this actually shows this time. Yeah. Burp, burp, burp. Uh, and I hate it. Oh, come <laughs> hey, on. It's so cute. No, it's cute. it's the paint. So it's metallic paint all around. And I think using it for the background is great because it kind of pushes it forward. But having everything in that metallic paint is not good. And the color green is too blue. I want it more yellow. And the yellow I have is more like an an ochre, like a brownish yellow. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to have to dig out some of my old acrylics and fix it and just redo the character. I love the background. The background is beautiful and simple, and I love it. I have artist problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fussy. You know You're this. fussy. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and that'll probably be when I finish up, because it's kind of just a, a surprise gift between that and the illustration board for for my friends, so. That's me. What about you, Linda? As for me, um, I'm trying to finish my Cast of the Year blanket. I actually have it on my lap right now. <laughs> I'm going to put it down when we start <laughs> talking the, uh, about the topic, but, eh. Oh, God, it's so huge. It's so big. And I'm putting, I'm <laughs> sewing it together. <laughs> so there's still big holes in it that are not supposed to be. Um, it's so big. It's so, so big. Um, huge. I'll, I'll, we know when I have a better able picture of it, I'll actually like post it somewhere so it can be seen. Um, and uh, I. So I was, I was trying to, like, finish up that, and I've got the, the big, like, header for it that has all the paw prints on it, and I was gonna make a footer for it, but making the header took so long that I'm like, I don't wanna. I just don't wanna. Like, I have to, <laughs> I'll have to, like, actually lay it out to see if it's, like, off balance, because if it's off balance, I'm gonna have to. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if it doesn't make any difference, I'll just leave it the way it is, because... I'm kind of done. Um, you reach that point with some of your projects where you're like, that's good. I'm done. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, crochet-wise, um, I've started working on a bunch of Bulbasaur variations. Um, like, I've made... Um, this is the head for, like, the normal colored one. But then okay. this is the one that I'm going to do for a fall. Um, so I basically... Um, I've got like seasonal variations. So for spring, I wanted to do, there was one that came out around Valentine's day. It was the pink one with the red spots and the rose. Um, I want to make that for summer. I want to do either yellow with orange spots or brown with yellow spots that has a sunflower on its back um, for, for fall, uh, the light purple or a dark purple with black spots. Um, and a jack-o'-lantern uh, or a pumpkin. Cool. Um, and then for winter, I want to do white with dark green spots and a pine cone on its back. Oh, like... neat. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I just, I think I, I hit. It would be like his little friend, though, too, then. Because there's yeah. a pine cone <laughs> there is, Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe I'll give it eyeballs. A little there pine cone will have eyes. <laughs> pine um, cone. But yeah, I think there was just, there came a point during the weekend where my brain went, mm, no more crochet, because I got distracted and rearranged my craft room. Oh. 
Like, okay. I, I just, I looked up from crocheting and go and went, that bookshelf could go on that other wall. And then those shelves could go over there. I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna go shove things around my room. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, during my d and campaign, I scared the crap out of my players by doing an actual haunted forest thing. Like, they got done with the, the main, like, they were dealing with uh, an intellect of hour, but they got done with that in, like, 20 minutes. And so they were like, all right. And I was like, okay, well, travel time. And then they realized that their straightest, like, straightest shot between where they were and where they wanted to go was through a haunted forest. And as they're, like, role-playing, I'm, like, flipping through the monster manual going, where's ghosts? Where's the will wisp Give me this. Put this here. <laughs> put that up in roll 20. <laughs> like, I was, like, flailing at roll 20 while they were talking. <laughs> like, right on. And they didn't. They didn't notice, and I was just like, all right, here we go. And they actually got, um, they were like, holy crap, because ghosts can possess the players. And one managed to do it. Oh. So I had control of one of their players for a for one of their PCs for a little while. For Unfortunately, it was the portent's wizard who isn't a very good fighter, so he just kind of ineffectually stabbed at the half-orc. But it was, it was funny nonetheless. <laughs> it's probably for the best for them. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then uh, my husband and I watched um, In Search of Darkness on Shudder, which is this, like, four-hour nostalgia trip into 80s horror movies. <laughs> um, it's very... Oh, yeah, it's very good. They go year by year. And like highlight the the big horror movies that came out and like different themes and tropes that uh, like came about because of these horror movies. Where it's is very that on? interesting. Shutter. Oh, Shutter. Right. Yeah, the the um. The you can get story. a you can get a like we we signed we signed up. We got a seven seven day free trial through Amazon Prime. Gotcha. So you, you, we basically were like, yeah, let's do it. So we were just like, get the free trial. And we just sat there on Saturday night until like 2.30 in the morning watching this four-hour thing. It was very good. Right so that was that was basically my week. Um, it, along with it being the week from hell at work. But let's not go into that. Um, <laughs> okay. We will speak no more of it. Speak no more of it. Um, so, now we're going to get into our discussion topic. Yes, I adjust my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, talk to me about Transformers. Yes, I, so I'm going to talk to you about the, this, this series in particular. Because talking about just Transformers in general, I will talk for another hour, and that will not fit in the show. I, um, I honestly think I thought that it was just you talking about Transformers, not specifically the work, the War for <laughs> Cybertron on Netflix series. Oh no, we know that's not. <laughs> that's a whole series of shows. You um, don't want that. <laughs> we, we've had plenty of Transformers discussions that, you know, weren't even, okay. they didn't start out that way. But I have questions <laughs> about this one because you are the expert, so that's interesting. Expert, quote unquote. Don't at me. Um, <laughs> I didn't say fanatic. Yeah. So. <laughs> I to be um, flattering. <laughs> the War for Cybertron trilogy that they're doing on Netflix. They've it's a three part series basically. Um, they've released the first part, which is called Siege, and there's six episodes, so it's a short mini series. Um, they don't really have a timeline for when the next two s seasons, I guess you could call them, are going to come out, um, just because of things being up in the air with COVID and, um, everything. So, I remember, I, like, I watched it all six episodes at once, because I binged the whole thing. Didn't take very long. Um, and then I went online and was like, when is the next season coming out? They were like, it'll be out within a year. Great. 
Okay, but obviously you liked it because you wanted more as soon as possible, right? Yeah, it's it's interesting. There, so there have been a couple of reviews saying it's too dark and gritty, but I I don't think so. I I think it's just I think they were expecting a kids cartoon, and it is not. <laughs> I was gonna say I like for me that it is kind of dark and gritty. Like, I actually just described it to Rob that way after I watched the first episode. Yeah. Um, and I actually, because it's computer animated, um, I felt like they did a super good job of, like, the texturing and stuff making. Because sometimes with the computer animation, it's just, like, it's so clean like, it's animation, so it seems like a weird thing to say, but sometimes it's like, oh my god, it just looks so fake. Like, you can't attach to it. But it being dark and gritty, fitting into, they're in this war. It This is, it's, it's very a dark much. Time. Yeah, it's very much the, the Autobots are kind of the remnants of a resistance. Like, the Decepticons have kind of won. But there are still. Obviously, Optimus Prime is still alive, and there's still a resistance going on. So, it's very much a story of their, like, almost kind of last stand slash, you know, final push to try and, like, have some sort of hope. Because they're, they are very few. <laughs> and and it's like every every episode is them, like, oh god... Oh, ow. I'm sorry. Ow. <laughs> and I mean, it's kind of tropey in the, I mean, in the, it always has been with the, you know, the Decepticons being obvious, some kind of militaristic fascist wanting to run everything. And then the Autobots are like your scrappy underdogs, right? And I don't know the whole history of Cybertron and the Transformers the way you do. And I wondered if there was any retconning um, you feel that I just don't know about like being introduced to and I mean spo how long has this been out can can we do spoilers or should you just tell uh, people spoilers if you haven't watched this yeah, yet yeah Bye. yeah there's probably going to be some spoilers All right, um, I'll... I'll, tr I'll try not to spoil too much because I know you're not done with it yeah um, well, I mean but I'm okay with spoilers too I'm not a problem I don't have a problem with that because I feel I'm in my whole so... life philosophy <laughs> you can experience things differently <laughs> um but bumblebee Basically, being introduced as as a neutral given people spoiler yeah. warning yeah that well, he wasn't an autobot that he was this merc yeah and... he's he's basically a scavenger in this series which i can't remember if any of the previous incarnations have done something like that they may have uh, I know a bunch about, like, the Transformers universe, but there are so many, like, not only TV shows, you know, the animated yeah. movies, there's, um... There's a comic series. Comics, there's several different comic lines. But do you know if any of them have ever told this period there's before? The, the game War for Cybertron is similar, like, it's a similar kind of setting, it's the ruined cities, the Autobots are kind of on the run. But even in the game, the Autobots have more of a foothold than they do in this one. Um, there may be a comic version of this that I haven't read. Um, but I will say, for like, in terms of like changing the story, quote-unquote, every iteration of Transformers changes the story so this is its own entity um it's different from comics that came before it it's different from the movies it's different from cartoons this is a they a just new... don't have a canon is that what you're they do but it's it's whatever canon you like best like, I really like the Transformers Prime and the Transformers Animated Canons, but they are two totally separate universes. Hmm. It's kind of like My Little Pony. 
Like kind of, yeah. You have you have the original My Little Pony from like the nineteen eighties. Just like there was... My Little Pony. Transformers is just like My Little I, Pony. It's Hasbro. No, I'm sorry. It was just <laughs> it is there Hasbro. You go. Hasbro's it is really Hasbro. bad at continuity. Is that what we're? Uh, <laughs> you're not get wrong. Sued for <laughs> no, but you're not wrong. And the reason Hasbro is bad at continuity is because they're basing their continuity off of toy sales. <laughs> we make shiny new versions for a shiny new universe. Buy there's, them. There's already toys for this. Yep. The toys existed before this came out on Netflix. <laughs> I'm not shocked as somebody who also had Transformer toys growing up. Yeah, yeah. Shocked face. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I didn't mean to run over you, Ray. It was just like in no, my head, there was a title in there somewhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, like, it was really hilarious because I actually listened to a couple of um, folks on YouTube were doing, like, their predictions about what this one might be about. And somebody was like, well, there's a Mirage. Uh, Mirage is one of the characters. There's a Mirage toy that's a Decepticon, so maybe he's a turncoat. And it's like, you have no idea what's going to happen in this, but you have seen that toy. So mm. you know at some point. He's got a Decepticon badge on him, and he's a different color. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's Mirage because they put his name on it. So it was just <laughs> now uh, Alita. So looks very this is like, different. I don't. I don't know anything about that. I was just like Alita. That's like that yeah. movie. That that cool movie. I like. Like, <laughs> and boy, her name doesn't sound like a Transformer name at all, or an auto. Well, her- you know. Her her full title is Alita One. Um, okay. I think they I think they just call her Alita in this one. Uh, let me see. Da, 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 voice acting. But I didn't what do you like. Call her? It, I I oh, don't no. remember. Of course, I'm not the fan you are. Like Optimus <laughs> Prime having this love interest situation. <laughs> oh yeah, that's canon from G1 from Generation okay. One. Um, the, 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 the first the first iteration of this is that they were a couple before. Okay, back up. <laughs> before Optimus was Optimus, he was Orion Pax, and before Alita was Alita, she was Ariel. They both got blown up in a dock accident because Decepticons. And they got reformatted into Optimus Prime and Alita One. So, yes, the relationship is canon, quote unquote, going back all the way to Generation One. But they don't always keep that in every iteration. Some some iterations have no Alita One. I think those are the only ones I've seen, apparently, um, or remember, because some yeah. of this stuff was when I was so little and. It wasn't even called Transformers <clears throat> half the time. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> so, the other thing I want to say I really found, to me, I noticed about the way they're being drawn that I really liked, is they looked like Transformers, right? Because some of the cartoons, some of the animated features, it's just, and even in the movies and stuff, they, they kind of sleek things up. Because I, I was a kid when Transformers were a very popular toy, and that, oh my god. God, they're not easy to transform. It's the whole thing was like so cool. But then they they look like and they did a good job in this where they're walking around doing stuff and some of them have those awkward proportions with the tiny head. But I appreciated that like like oh look, there's a side quarter panel with a wheel on his elbow and oh it still doesn't make sense it's for another planet and they look like American vehicles. Um, I they, liked I, that they looked like you could <laughs> do all the, you know, shit you have to do and transform them into vehicles <laughs> yeah, or that weapons was, that or was whatever. My, like my one little, like, I, I, I generally tend to keep an open mind about whatever new one comes about, especially because this is like only the first chapter mm-hmm. or season. Um, I was like, shouldn't you make them look more like alien vehicles? You know what? I'm not going to think about it. We're not going to look too hard at it. <laughs> well, that's like never been a thing. What do you mean? Because they've always 
even though the origin is supposedly they're from the planet Cybertron, they've always looked like, well, other than the ones that are ray guns and jet fighters, but that's still like that's Earth stuff. They've always looked. They've always transformed into Earth stuff. Optimus what? Prime is a freaking semi. <laughs> so that's the one thing that they do better in some of the other animated um, versions is if they start on Cybertron. Um, well, let's take Transformers Prime, for example. They, they don't start on Cybertron. However, um, they've been on Earth for a while and all the Autobots have Earth vehicle modes. But then you get to Megatron, who has not been on Earth for a while in this particular instance. Um, again, we're talking about the Prime, Transformers Prime series. And he, he never, ever takes an Earth vehicle mode. He is always this really weird, spiky, alien-looking, like, space jet. Which I thought was very, like, a good thing for them to do. <laughs> that kind of makes sense. Like, they yeah. refitted when they got to this planet to fit in. Yeah. Yeah. Or when. And I, I don't know if it's just because they had... It was a short series. They didn't think about it, or they didn't care to. It's it's whatever. It's again. again I'm not gonna look too hard at it. I think they made the toys first, and it. then they decided they were from another planet. Probably. I I, I, I bet the, if we in, looked back. No, no, in the original, that is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. In the original, when they got the toys first from Japan, and they gave it to one of their like. Not understudies, that's not the right word. They gave it to, like, one of the guys in the office and said, here, give these a story and names. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna make a cartoon out of it to sell the toys. Yeah. Of a headcanon that somehow Cybertron sends out radio waves to, that scientists and engineers pick up on. And they're, like, inspired in their, <clears throat> in their dreams. Like, no, this is what this creation will look like. And thus they come down and they're like... Oh, hey, look, there, there are things that kind of look like us. So we transform. We'll just fit right in, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I was a nerd. I I grew up in a GM household. And when they came out, the the Transformers movies, that like all the Autobots were GM vehicles and all the Decepticons were like foreign. Made yeah. me so happy. <laughs> just unreasonably happy. <laughs> I, I was amused by that. I was like, oh uh, my and God, then after a political thing, <laughs> and then after after the after the first movie, it just turned into terrible Michael Bay fan fiction, and I was done with it. <laughs> it's just it's awful. Um, <laughs> I have feelings about the Bay movies. I don't. I pretend like they don't exist, except for the first one, because that get that gets a pass, but only sometimes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of okay with the first one. The second one, I was like. Oh, wow. Well, this is garbage. Now yeah. I can watch any of them, and it's just kind of like, eh, I'm in the mood for a popcorn fun explodey thing. Like, the same reason I'll watch <sighs> the Battlefield one, or that kind of garbage. Mm -hmm. um, well, just to I watch stopped. things explode. I stopped after the third one, because I was like, I cannot take this! I cannot take how you are destroying something that brought me joy as a child! Well, I think that's why the <laughs> second one irritated the shit out of me because they really went with like a lot of over the top cursing and stuff that was just so out of place unnecessary I'm like are you really just trying to be that edgy and this is like what I would take my kids to and that's just gonna make everyone uncomfortable why are yeah. you doing that not to mention the racism but yeah <laughs> yeah uh, but I actually this... almost walked out and I don't I don't think mm -hmm. I've ever actually walked out of a movie because I'm cheap <laughs> But they actually, they're, for uh, War for Cybertron, they're actually very um, respectful of the source material. There's a there's actually a lot of Easter eggs in there. If, if you're a, a longtime fan and you know what you're, like, looking for, you're like, oh, I know that. Oh, that's a thing. Oh, yay. <laughs> like, they mention a couple of things about certain characters' backstories that are definitely, like from earlier comics or you know things like that and it's just like yay <laughs> yeah there was one scene in the ambush i think it's in the second one where it was like 
kind of a roll call. So, I mean, it made sense, but it was also super obvious fan service to me when it was like making sure everybody was in position and they just like would show a quick still and show that different Autobot or the, or sorry, that different Decepticon. Yeah. And it was just Decepticon. That one, that one, that one, <laughs> that one. Look, your favorite is here. We promise. It just seems <laughs> so <laughs> obviously up front to me. <laughs> but yep. yeah. I get it. You have to do that. I love fan yeah. service when I'm watching something and like it's got I, that I'm, stuff. I'm looking for my characters. I'm a little upset that my favorite character wasn't in there, but maybe he'll be in the second chapter. Who knows? <sighs> Give me my jazz. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Come on, he's like the coolest character. And Michael Bay killed him. I know what you did. <laughs> anyway. Um So yeah, like that that I went off on a tangent there. Like I knew I would. Um but I I can recommend Siege. Um there like there were some folks that were like, "Oh, they look too much like toys." And I'm like, "That didn't bother me." I um, liked it. Yeah, like it it's but I think and, I have a more experience with the actual toys, probably first gen, than I do with any of the shows. Yeah. But something about how they're animated gives them very, a lot of weight. And, like, it doesn't feel like uh, and like animated CGI characters being flung about. There's actual, like, impact. And they did a very good job with, like, showing... Um, this is going to sound terrible, but showing injuries... And, like, you can tell this is very much the war-scarred, like, Optimus. And, like, he's got all sorts of just pock marks and battles, battle yeah, scars they, all over Yeah, they did a good here. job with depth and weight, like, in the sound design mm -hmm. and their movement. Like, that kind of thing can really matter. And I think they did an excellent job with that stuff. And they do show, like, later on, like, how kind of the Decepticon war machine works. It's a lot of propaganda. Um, so it's a oh. lot of Megatron standing up and like saying stuff over a, a large crowd over big monitors. So it's... Well, when he was un... giving the speech in an arena that had all those flags that were very much in the kind of, you know, war, World War II propaganda style, I took oh, yeah. that hint pretty easily. Yep. They lean into that. <laughs> Um, Sometimes you do. Star Wars did it. Yeah, and again, there are um, like homages to things that happen in in other series and like the original series. Like um, Impactor is one. What happens to him? Uh, Jetfire. So if <laughs> if you're like a if, again, if you're a fan that's seen multiple of the series, you're like okay, I know what's going to happen with this character. I know what's going to happen with this character. But there are a couple that are like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. So they do a very good mix of, you know, giving homage to the source material, but also doing their own thing. So that is my opinion. <laughs> I'm going to watch the rest of it. I know that. I'm going to take you long. Grab... me on it. <laughs> Hey, it's you know. only six episodes. <clears throat> yeah, it's only six. They're only like a half hour long ish. And yeah, uh, I like the one and a half I watched, so I may as well watch the rest of it. And hey, if you're if if you're into this kind of thing, Rotten Tomatoes apparently has given it a, a hundred percent rating. Wow. Wow. It's only thirteen critics, but it's a hundred percent rating. <laughs> <laughs> no, thirteen people agree. <clears throat> thirteen people agree. By 14. More than you can get in the room. Yeah, fourteen if you count me. Um. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you're interested in listening to me ramble more about different types of transformers, um, you can chime in by emailing us at geekgirls at gmail dot com. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you just thought it was funny me going off on a tangent, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, two out of three grills recommend that watched all that, that some watched. and none <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so uh what are y'all most anticipating coming up 
Uh, getting that mask order finished, I still haven't. Um, I've done 11 of 20, because I've done 10 of the 20 in the order, and I made Linda's new one. Yay! <laughs> with the longer... I'll probably just <laughs> send you both, like, in case you're good with the smaller... I don't know, maybe you have a small head. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and are fine with the tighter ear things or stretch it out or whatever. Um, and uh, I have to figure out Rob's birthday present. I have, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I have an idea to maybe get a friend of mine who plays piano to lay a track for me and make him a song. But I'm not sure if I can even do it. Um, so, yeah, I have to work on that because his birthday is September 10th. Um, and mine's the 6th, and that'll be a fun week. Uh, and I have to make, I have some wood-burning projects for uh, my friend Lori and my friend Leah. We have all kinds of astrological stuff. Um, I'm going to watch more Lower Decks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to watch the John Lewis uh, documentary. I believe that's the one that's titled I'm Not Your Negro. Um, but I know it's on, it's like the Amazon Prime BLM channel. And I'm going to watch that to prep for tomorrow's heresy and hearsay. So that's what I'll be doing during the day tomorrow. That and masks. <laughs> awesome. um, yeah, I'm probably just gonna finish up that painting and maybe hopefully finish up my giant turtle painting too. I don't know, that guy just keeps staring at me. He wants to be done. Uh, and then my mom's birthday is at the end of this month, so I'm trying to figure out what to do for her. Like, I want to see her, but she's high risk, so I don't know. Like, having an inflatable dinosaur costume? I guess I could go visit her in that? He. That might work? <laughs> Um, or I might just, like, send her a package with some nice stuff and some food. I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> you know the best inflatable costume visit I've seen during the pandemic so far? BMO. BMO? BMO? BMO. BMO. Oh, From Big God. Hero 6 being, like, the oh. medical. <laughs> They're there. Like, yeah, a friend of mine did that for his son for his birthday. And I was like, oh, my God. That is, like, perfect pandemic wear. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm your personal medical assistant. <laughs> um, then for me, I'm going to try to finish this cat blanket. I'm, it's adorable, but I'm done with it. Um, <laughs> and Fair. then I, I am hoping for a calmer week at work, considering how today went. I don't know if that's in the cards. However, hope springs eternal, so... <laughs> Ah, uh, I still love my job. It's just frustrating right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it can um, ups and downs. Jobs are like that. Yep, jobs are like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I guess that's all we're planning on. Um, remember, folks, you can always come watch us record live at twitch.tv slash geek grills and on most monday evenings our next one will be august 24th at 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern time in addition to the subs and bits that we get on twitch we are supported by our amazing patrons you're the greatest girlfriends on the internet and you can become a patron at www.patreon.com slash grills uh, also, don't forget, if you have Amazon Prime, you can sub to us for free every month on Twitch. And another way to show your support is by leaving us a review. You can do so on any of your podcast catchers. Leaving a review is free, and they help our ranking, which helps other people find our podcast. And you can also join our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter if you'd like to help spread the word. So where can we find you, Grills, on the interwebs? Well, I can be found at 9 of 12, that's N-I-N-A-O-F-1-2, on Twitter and Twitch, and you can hear me on the Heresy and Hearsay podcast. Ray? Sorry, it, it cut out on me? Uh, you can find me on Instagram under Dapple Dane and on Twitch as Ray Ino. Um, Linda? 
Uh, you can find me on Twitch and on Instagram under the name Madcap underscore Misc. That's M I S uh, M I S C as in miscellaneous. <laughs> I know my own handle. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> and you, uh, it's been a day. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Good game. <laughs> GG. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I think we all must have had a bit of a day. I have had a hell of a week. My I've had a life changing week. But it's all very personal stuff and I'm happier than I have been in uh years <laughs> right now. And I hope it lasts. <sighs> oh, so I, I have a um a suggestion if you can get the sound clip. Uh is either before we start talking, um, or like before I introduce the uh, the topic like do the transformers Conversion transforming noise. sound can you the see transforming sound <laughs> I have a note written down yay transformers <laughs> conversion noise <clears throat> to grab that and stick that in there when you introduce the topic <laughs> or or the same uh, level is getting a sound clip of uh, Optimus going Autobots roll out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Either, yeah. either Great or. minds think alike. I was totally <laughs> on track with that. Um, the hmm. other thing was we got to find, I want to find something for Ray. Hmm. Cause well, I mean, I don't have anything, but I don't, I talk about such different shit all the time, but like we've got your fluffy bumper, uh -huh. um, that I throw in. Cause there's usually a place where you take a breath when you're grabbing whatever it is you're working on and I can throw yeah. your, that in <laughs> or I do it post. Um, but like seems to be a regular update on or like Ray has her project and it would be nice to have some kind Isn't if we there... find some kind of sound effect or bumper that would fit in with that. So um, there is a clip from Iron Giant where the oh, dude, art. it's art. <laughs> I can totally look for that, or, and yeah, if one of you find it, <laughs> um, if you guys find it, send it to me, because um, that'll save me some of the work. It's a lot trickier than it used to be. I used to use this vid to MP3 thing that would just rip YouTube audio, and then I could just cut the piece out I want, and it doesn't work anymore. And I keep having to find something different to do the same damn thing. And not all of them are free and it's annoying. Um, but yeah, I can look for that. But even just finding the YouTube at least saves me that step. Um, like yeah. I had, to, I pulled David Bowie saying the Lord's Prayer off YouTube by putting my mic in front of my other computer the other day. <laughs> wow. Sadly. Um, Let's see, Showbot titles. What do we we used to have... Back in the day, when Grills first started, <laughs> our first format was actually read, watch, play. Instead of just, what are you up to? Like, we used to talk okay. about what we were reading, what we were watching, what we were playing. But all through iterations, not, not all of us game, not all of us are reading something, not all of us are playing, and that wasn't as able to always hold together. But then, like, we kind of worked back in, like, now we have the fluffy update <laughs> because Linda is always crocheting. Um, and it's, it like... it's how I relax. <laughs> yeah. But when you've got Momocon coming or whatever, there's projects that, like, I feel like when I show something that I'm working on, it's like, a, okay, I'm going to show this because then it's accountability that next week I'll have to say if I finished it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's actually what I've been using this for with my art updates. I thought you might be, and so I wanted to encourage that with get, finding you a bumper. Okay, so hashtag artist problems, <laughs> which if people listen to the post show, it's going to seem like an even better title. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Transformers and My Little Pony, same thing. <laughs> Toy continuity is hard. Um... That was uh, off the cuff, but the like mm -hmm. something about like <coughs> canon. Yeah. <laughs> like, toy canon, too much to ask. But, yeah. Ooh, ooh, double entendre. Um, 
And I just want time to have meaning meaning again. I saw I spotted that in Ray's notes, but oh yeah, he didn't get to it, <laughs> and it was just funny. To like, we all want that, and I feel a little. We all of us felt a little off awkward off our game today for some reason. And I think that which might is be which it. is. Which is sad because I was like, okay, I got this. And then we started talking about it and I'm just like, and my mind is wandering. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I actually had a really good day at work. Like, I got a shout out from one of our sales team. Like, Kelly, I'm pushing for you to get a raise. I told your boss how awesome you are and I'm buying you lunch. Let me know where you want it delivered. I'm like, awesome. And then, like, I, I don't know. I Then I have, like, a, an associate messaging me for money because they need money till the end of the month and... I don't know. Now I'm just kind of like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Let me uh, see. What am I voting? <laughs> I kind of, personally, I kind of like Transformers My Little Pony, same thing. I mean, it... <laughs> they're yeah. both Hasbro. They're, they're both Hasbro. Both Hasbro. <laughs> yeah, and I was really tempted to put, like, Hasbro is just bad at canon. Yeah. But I don't you know, just in case. actually tempt getting sued? I mean, do we... Yeah. <laughs> we don't just have case. anything. <laughs> we can just <laughs> risk getting the free publicity. <laughs> uh, they, they know what they do. <laughs> and it's sketchbook ready for whatever we decide to go with. <laughs> yeah. I, think, uh, I think Transformers My Little Pony is the same thing. What I would suggest... If you think you can do it, which I sure I'm sure you can because you're a fantastic artist, is an armored My Little Pony. <laughs> I was thinking of that. I was thinking of either armored My Little Pony or, or an on or an, an Autobot, ML like something based off of We're like an Optimus. Mark. Yeah, an Optimus Prime My Little Pony. I don't know what cutie mark you would use for that. Give me a second. You'd use an Autobot logo. Yeah, I suppose, but that's kind of. They're supposed to be... Or you could have fighting ones, and you could have an Autobot one and a Decepticon <laughs> And a Decepticon one. one. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Decepticon, the Decepticon has now. to be a Pegasus. <laughs> Decepticon is a Pegasus. Yes. Uh, you oh. might as well do Megatron and, and Optimus and have Optimus be a unicorn. Or maybe an Earth... No, he needs to be an Earth pony. Sorry, I'm getting way into it. <laughs> yeah, wow, you guys know okay. more about MLP than I do, too. <clears throat> So oh, we, I, I was the two of us like, we fighting robot, robot ponies. ponies. Yeah, no, the the two of us like when the when the new like Friendship the new My Little it. Pony came out, we were super into it because it was very good. Like our <laughs> husbands enough, got into it with us. Our husbands got into it with us because it was very good. <clears throat> that really surprised me. Yeah, that surprised me too about about yours, not about mine. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I think there was I... even yeah, there was even a plan at one point to run like Ponies of Amber, like set an Amber game <sighs> in My I Little Pony. <laughs> I still do it. I wrote up the card. I made little cards. 